Hello, good day, welcome back. Today, I want to look at how we encode and decode XML. Here I am in my directory called Go on the Run. So this is what I'm calling this little series here for YouTube, which I'm just going to post some short videos on just random stuff. Uh, previous video, I look at how to encode and decode in JSON. So let's jump in. So I'm sitting here in this directory I call Go on the Run. And the only directory I have, sub directory I have here is the, from the previous video, which is the Go JSON Go code. And what we're doing in that video is we created some types, two types to be specific, a user type and a user database type. And we worked on how to turn objects of those types into JSON. And so this is our create JSON function that we wrote in the previous video. And we're able to create some a slice of users and then write it out to JSON. And in our major function, we demonstrate that how we can read it back and just display it. So just for kicks and giggles, let's make sure that how we can still do that. So I'm going to open up my terminal here and uh, let's jump down to my terminal and do ls. And so I'm going to go into this directory and again, that's the file I have. I'm going to say go run main.go and uh, wait a second. Uh, so this is the file I'm supposed to create. Okay. I commented out the create part because every time I run this program, it's going to try and create a file. So I run that. And so notice I created this JSON file for me. And so let's say format on that document. And so that's my JSON document. And there's my simple type at the bottom. And then it read it back. So hence why I had commented out this code to show that um, if you assume that we already have a JSON file, so that's going to save. And I run it again. Um, it's going to read that file. So this time it did not create it. Okay. All right. So now we want to do pretty much the same thing for uh, XML. And so I want to reuse some of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a directory. So this is my JSON directory here. I'm going to create a directory called XML Go. So let's call it XML Go. And of course it's empty. And I'm going to create some other directories also. What I want to do is reuse our type. So for XML code, we don't have to recreate the types. And you can imagine that you're writing an, a web application and you have some types that you want to support for either getting JSON documents and writing it out or getting XML. And maybe you want to support both XML and JSON. So there's no reason for you to recreate your type. So we want to share our type. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a directory here. I'm going to call it types, for example. And what I'm going to do is move into this directory all my types. So let's go here. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to go to my types directory and I'm creating a new file. Let's just call it types.go. I mean, I could have called it types.go if I wanted to, too. And then package. And this is a package in types, a directory name. So one of the things I can do, instead of saying type type, I can just say type, open parentheses, and then now I can just move my types into here, and then now I get rid of this, and I don't have to say type both times, and then now if I save it, so that's good. But we st or now we have broken our program. Um, if I try to run this, it's not going to work now because our type is in a different directory. So if I run this, you see types undefined. So now I have to go here and say types that that user, that's where my types are defined now, types that user database. And let's see where else am I using a type. Um, somewhere in here to load uh, my data. Yep, here we go. Types that user database. And so I'm going to save changes. And now if I scroll up, you can see my import is now this path where I have my type. If I run this now, I should expect to get the same result and it still works. Okay, great. One other thing I'd like to do is here I'm hard coding the file that I'm using. So um, again, I should probably, and I'm hard coding it there and I'm using the same thing here. So what I'm gonna do is cut this and I'm gonna say JSON file or input file if you like. 
So we'll go here, it's going to be the output file, but okay, just got a JSON file. And um, here, we're going to use the same variable, JSON file. And then I'm going to create a constant here, constant JSON file equals to paste that there. Okay, so save this and um, it should be, why is this JSON? Okay, JSON, JSON file. Yep, okay. So type an error there. So no, this should all still thing. So far, I haven't done anything really to show you about XML encoding. So far, I'm just cleaning up our old code. Um, one last thing I wanna do here is I'm gonna drag this onto the screen here. And this is the documentation for this JSON package. And so you can find it here. So I'm going to put that at the top of our application here. I'm gonna say um, reference help on the JSON package that I use. All right, so now let's get done to writing our code. Oh, one other thing. Um, I don't want my JSON file to be stored in the subdirectory of the, with the JSON code. I wanna store that maybe in some external directory, which I'm gonna call data. Um, because remember, I'm gonna try and reuse not only the type, but also the data. So I can read in JSON and write out XML and vice versa. So I'm gonna have a data directory. And so um, relative to where I am, I wanna go up and put this in the data directory, okay? And so let's see if that works. So let me delete this directory from here, this file, sorry. And I'm gonna rerun our application. And if this works, I should see, oh, well, I need to uncomment creating JSON here. So if this works, let it save, we should see here, JSON file showed up here on the data and that works and so that's great. Okay, all right. So let's get on now to doing our XML um, application. I'm going to XML go and I'm going to create main.go. I'm going to do package main, of course, function main. And what's the first thing we want to do? Well, like I said, we want to reuse these types for XML. So if you look at the example for reading in um, or for even writing out XML data is we have some objects and then we just create an encoder and write the data out. So I'm going to say, let's read in our JSON data and write it out to XML. Well, we have code to read in JSON here. So let's just copy this, copy this. And actually I'm going to copy all of this. I'm going to paste this in our XML code. Actually, do you want to write it from scratch? So let's just save some time and paste it there. Let's also get this constant. I don't have to retype it, but we'll keep things simple and we'll do it like this. I'm going to save changes and now my code is, all the errors are gone. And one thing I'd like to do, however, is change this to, since I'm doing an ampersand here, why don't I just make this a pointer instead? So I'm going to say new, um, put this, create a new user database object and just pass, pass a pointer to it for decoding and for printing. And we know how that's gonna work without me having to do any dereference or anything. And so let's run this now and see. So I'm gonna CD up one and then go back down to my XML directory. And I'm gonna say go run main. And yep, this looks good. So we were able to read the data. So notice in this program, all I'm doing is reading data. I open a file and decode the JSON. So now we have some JSON data. What about if we can write this out now to, so let's turn this into a function. Um, so I like that. Um, so I'm gonna leave that that way. Then I'm gonna scroll up and I still, we're missing a function main because we rename our function main just now. And so I'm gonna say, database comma error colon equals to read json file and i'm gonna pass it to json file it should read okay and then i say if nil not equals to error then log that fatal ln uh, error okay otherwise i know that oh, i have a valid database um object 
populated from JSON. So what I want to do now is write that out as XML. So like we said before, what we do, we need a file to write stuff out to. We need a writer. So if we do XML encoder, for example, colon equals XML that new encoder, right? Notice we need we need a IO writer, which is some place to write our XML to. So that's going to be a file. So we have to create a file. So I'm going to say f error colon equals os that create. It's a new file. It doesn't exist yet. And this is going to be our XML file. So I'm going to call it XML file. We don't have an XML file yet, but I'm going to do like this. And again, I could sort of just put all of these in one by doing that. So I'm going to call this XML file. And this is going to be XML. So my XML database file. And so um, I'm going to create the file. If I have any problem creating it, I don't expect to have any. So if nil not equals to error, then again, I'm going to log fatal uh, ln and error. So why didn't, weren't we able to create this file? I don't know, before closing this file, my XML file, that is. All right. So I've created an XML file. It's empty. And I give it as a writer to my XML encoder, which means anything I encode to this XML goes into that file, which is exactly what we want. So what should we encode? Well, we should encode the object that we read in from JSON, right? And we stored in the user database object. So I'm going to say XML encode that encode. And now I can pass it this DB object. And that should be all the she wrote. And let's see if this works. So if I go up there and I run this, no error. And then notice I have an XML database file. Let's see what's in it. And I'll reformat. And so this certainly looks like an XML document. Um, there's some things, unlike our JSON document, notice oh, we have things in lowercase and so on. Where is our JSON output? Uh, JSON output. Yep, JSON output here. Let's format it. We have things in lowercase and so on. So we can, we can certainly fix that up. But at least it's looking good right away. And all it took us is about two lines of code to do it. Besides having a writer, we, we had to create a file. But other than that, it was fine. So let's go to type that go. And what I want to do is make this the first type to appear in our file. That doesn't change anything, really. I mean, if I rerun our code here, um, all it does is it put types the type first. That's all it does. Move it from the bottom to the top. Now, here's a problem. This says user database is our enclosing our root element and type users. Do we really want each one of these to be a user? Seems like each one of these should be a user and not a user and not users. So we can go back to type and notice how we have these tags that help us to notify tell the JSON encoder and decoder how it should treat our type, right? So we can do the same thing for XML. So we do space, we say XML colon, and we want this field, which is called users to be just called user only instead of user. And then we want XML, this field to be just called type instead of uppercase type. And we can go ahead and do the same thing with these other ones. So we want XML colon email Notice there's a space, XML colon password, space XML colon username. All right, so let's rerun our code and see what happens. So we rerun this and we'll go back to our XML and reformat the document. And as you can see, this is called a user exactly as we would like. So this is much better. So if we look at our XML now, we notice that we still have this type here that has been this root element being called user DB. And it seems like what we really want is this to be called users. So let's go back to our types and try to fix that. 
So one of the things we can do is using the XML package, there's a special type in it called XML name. And so we can say XML name, and the type of that is XML.name, which comes from the XML package itself. And I'm going to tag it, I'm going to say XML colon, and we want to call this users. Okay, let's save this. And we just need to rerun our XML code, and let's see how it encodes it this time. So we go back here and format and there we go our root element is being called users there's a problem that we have just introduced though because now our type includes this new field called xml xml.name the json code even though we don't say how to encode it in json the json encoder will still try to encode it and we can see what that's going to look like if we go up one and then go into our json code and then go go run main that go and if we look at our JSON code and we reformat that too, we'll see here is that field that we have encoded, but we don't really want this field. This is really just for XML so we can get this root element to have a name that we want. So we want to be able to say, JSON encoder, I want you to ignore this field. So how do we do that? Well, we say JSON colon dash well i think uh, it's let's see i don't think it should be encoded as so i think that's it we're going to try this and see uh yeah let's put this in quote and see all right otherwise so it probably wouldn't make sense all right so this dash says i do not want this to be encoded and so if you put a comma it means something else like encode it with the actual value of dash i think but i think this means ignore it and we can check the documentation if we don't get this to work so I save that and let's rerun it again. And now I'm gonna go look at my JSON code and it does not look like it's included. Great, so that's exactly what we want. We want to ignore that this field when we're doing JSON, but when we're doing XML, we wanna include it. All right, and we already saw that that works for XML exactly like we want. There's some other things that you can do with XML that doesn't make sense in JSON. So for example, what if we wanted to attach a user ID attribute to each user? And we don't want that to be a sub element of the user, but an attribute of user. So how would you do that? Well, let's go back and let's add a ID field to um, call int to our, we said JSON. This is going to be called ID. And I'm going to ignore the whole if NT thing. And I'm going to say colon. For XML, it's going to also be called ID. I'm going to save this and let's run. And I really don't, well, let's go to our JSON code and for each user, give them ID, ID colon your one and ID colon your two. Let's just do that. And since we're in JSON already, let's rerun this code and Let's look at our JSON code, format it, and there we have, each user has their own ID. Well, what does this look like when we run it for XML? So, go run main, and now let's look at our XML, and reformat, this is a little annoying, I have to reformat. And there it is as an element of user, but what we want it to be is an attribute. So that can easily be fixed by going here and saying, comma this is an attribute and so now when we rerun this code go look at our xml you'll see that id now becomes an attribute of user and that's exactly what we want there's some other cool tricks that you can do let's say for example we decide to introduce first name and last name so our users have first name string and just while we're here, we'll say JSON colon. It's going to be called first name, for example. Um, let's keep it that way. And for XML, we want it to be called just first. Okay. And I'm going to cheat real quick. And then a last name. And we'll call this last. And last. Okay. So this is exactly as you expect. It should work for xml when we go back to our xml code we're gonna see first name first and last we don't have any values so it's empty right now 
But what if we want these two to have a parent element? Well, we can do that very easily by going to our type and saying that first is a sub element of name and last is also a sub element of name. And since these two have our children of the same parent, they're going to pair together. So let's run our code, see what that looks like and format. And there you go. Our elements now on, appear on an element called name, even though we don't actually have a field name name. That's because in our tags, we sort of describe it. And we could do the sort of same thing with, let's say, username and password. We can put those under some sub element called security. And notice this is only for the XML we're doing this with. We're saying, you know, SEC URTY or secret. Secret, come on this and secret comma that and now when we run this and look here there we go so that is it um i hope you enjoyed the video see you soon in the next video i'll probably show you how to do like encoding and decoding to comma separated values that's also sort of important and still widely used I didn't show you decoding, I show you encoding, but from the example with JSON, you see that it's very, very easy to do. Just create an XML decoder and use the same type and you're going to decode this file back into an object. All right. Good luck. Take care. Post questions or comment. Spread the word and please do subscribe. Bye.